Okay, so there's a lot of buzz on the internet right now about uh, this new Zeitgeist movie, Zeitgeist moving forward. Um, so I, I thought I'd sort of offer my critique. I, I recently watched it. Um, you know, so the, the first Zeitgeist movie that came out was basically just a conspiracy film about, it talked about, you know, religions all being based on astrology and about, uh, you know, the 9-11 conspiracy theory and, um, federal, stuff about the Federal Reserve. Um, overall, I would just call that movie a steaming pile of crap. There's, there's very little redeeming value in it and, uh, not worth watching in my opinion, but... But it, but if you do want to watch it, I'm going to put link to all three films in, in low bar, so you can watch it at your leisure. Um, so you know that that kind of soured me to the whole Zeitgeist Enterprise. Uh, so that when people talked about the Zeitgeist Addendum when that came out, uh, I was I kind of did a little face palm. And I was like, oh no, not this shit again. But that, but then people were like, "Oh no, you you uh, you should watch it. It's, it's different. They go into like this, uh, you know, political philosophy about, uh, you know, the um the Venus Project and the resource based economy and things like that." I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, well that sounds kind of interesting. I'll I guess I'll go ahead and check that out. And I uh, watched that one, and I enjoyed about like the first half of it. You know, where they they talk a lot of the, about a lot of the problems of our current society, which, which um, you know. Including you know debt money and economic growth and the profit motive and you know, uh, you know criticize a lot a lot of the, a lot of things that I that I'm concerned about as well in our in our economy um, you know planned obsolescence and stuff but then when they when they get into talking about okay well, what do we do about this they they start describing this sort of techno utopian anarcho communist uh, future that um, basically um, it actually sounded a lot like this this other um, ideology I've, I know about called technocracy, which was proposed in like the 1930s, uh, you know, as a way of getting us out of the depression. Uh, but the technocracy people actually had a more of a plan for constructing this future than the Venus Project people do. I mean, I mean, they 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 said you know we we can have um, you know energy credits in order to, uh, to replace the monetary system, whereas you know, the, the zeitgeist people were saying, actually, just get rid of money. We don't need it. We'll just, you know, use, use this, just mobilize these massive resources for nothing and then, uh, you know, apply it and then, and then create this, this technological future that we can't even possibly dream of right now. And, you know, okay. Like, um, so, I, I yeah, the, 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 there's this new, Zeitgeist movie out called Zeitgeist Moving Forward. It's about two and a half hours if if you got the patience to watch that. And it's it basically it's basically this, the same stuff as the addendum talks about, not a little bit more detail. Um, so I'm going to be critiquing both of those films at the same time. So uh, you know, let's go. I mean, first of all, um, you know, they harp on the profit motive a lot. They they say that. Um, that contrary to the claims of economists, that uh, the profit motive leads to entirely negative consequences. Um, that, it, that it creates artificial scarcity, uh, where there need be be them, while also uh, treating natural resources as, as if they were free. Um, yeah, I mean that's true enough in uh, you know in the context of our economy, but but they're they're saying that. You know, the, the simply having a money, having a monetary system creates creates this, and I I call bullpucky on that. Um, so I mean, I mean the, the problem you know, with it's with sort of artificial scarcity is rent. Yeah, I I, would keep, I keep talking about land value ta ta taxation and taxing rent because that's essentially the profit that's derived from ownership of a resource. You know, you um. You you own the land uh, of some coal mine, and and so you can uh, you choose how much to sell. You can, you can sit on a resource basically, uh, without you know, and sort of wait for the price to go up. It's called speculation, um, and there are ways to address that within a monetary system, within a tax system. Uh, you know, with, such as land value taxation, such as. Uh, 
you know, demurrage fees for money, you know, that, um, and there's, there, I mean, there's other demurrage fees, like, like for, uh, you know, ships waiting outside of harbor or something, but, um, yeah, um, overall, I, I think they also neglect a lot of the positive, um, aspects of the, of the, of the profit motive. I mean, uh, yeah, the, the idea of some sort of financial, financial reward, uh, for, for effort is, uh, it has led to a lot of, um, great, great inventions. And I think, you know, I mean, just because some inventions might have happened without the profit motive, I, I think the idea that ingenuity would, you know, continue apace with what it is now, or even flourish furthermore, that further from where it is, if we got rid of the profit, then I, I think that's pretty, um, naive in my opinion. Um, they also talk about plant plant obsolescence, which uh, you know is another um, consequence of the profit motive. Um, I'm not sure we would necessarily be able to get rid of it, get rid of this entirely. Um, I I don't see how their plan. I, I'm. I I, th I think the way that their plan gets rid of plant, plant obsolescence is by uh, is it, it's through is that it would destroy creativity utterly. You know, I mean, it, it it's basically it sounds like a very top down plan that they've got and doesn't leave a lot of room for, uh, you know, innovation. But, um, so, uh, so, okay, we go, uh, you know, one, um, one, uh, cause of, planned obsolescence, I think, is the fact that producers don't have to bear the cost of, uh, of the end of, of the product's lifestyle, life cycle. You know, they, um, you know, they, they produce the products, the consumer uses the product, they throw it away. Um, there's sort of an implicit subsidy, both for the producer and for the consumer. You know, the, the consumer doesn't have to pay the cost of the, of the waste, and it's not directly anyway. So, I mean, um, you know, it, it could be that uh, we just we just need to uh, have a system of yeah, maybe for large at least for larger um, for larger products for more complex complex products like cars and uh, you know and chairs and, and computers and whatnot. We should we should maybe have a system where the consumer returns the broken or broken product to the producer. And you know maybe get yeah, and maybe get some sort of credit for 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 new product you know, so I mean instead of talking about having a product last you know for how many decades, you know maybe have it so that uh, the product is easily is easily broken down and uh, recycled and recycled into new products and um, if you haven't if you haven't yet I, I recommend this book by um, William by William McDonough and uh, Michael Braungart called Cradle to Cradle, um, where they talk about what's called upcycling, which is, which is basically the idea of uh, creating products with the end cycle in mind, and they say it's actually a profitable thing to do, where because um, you save on materials when you do it, you say okay I'm going to produce this chair uh, with the end cycle in mind so that once you know the person doesn't want it anymore or it breaks. They can just take take it uh, take it apart, you know, d disassemble it, and then reuse the parts. And so that I mean that's that's how upcycling works. And so I, I think you can easily incorporate that sort of thing into a profit based system. Um, yeah. And so the what am amazes me is you know the amount of change they they want to have taken in society, while also getting rid of the, of the monetary system. Yeah. Okay. I I agree with you know debt money is a problem and it like it is connected to our need for in, for infinite growth. Um, yeah. Uh, but but the idea of getting rid of money I think is is extremely problemat problematic. I mean, they they think they see money as only being a limitation when when in fact I mean money is a means to mobilize a resource. So money money is a claim on a resource. Um, and you know, the kind of changes they're talking about require you know worldwide mobilization of resources. So I mean, 
uh, you know, to try and do that while getting rid of the sort of liquidity that's, that provides that, that uh, mobilization of resources is going to be really problematic. Um, and, you know, you know they, it, it, it's interesting to me that in, in the addendum, they basically, you know, are very negative about government and want to basically replace government with technology, uh, essentially, and, um, and say that you know, instead of having the state enforce, uh, you know, speed, speed limits, for example, where we might just have a um, car, cars that can pull over on their own and things like that. Um, you know, uh, but basic, basic what it, uh, you know, in, in spite of you know, that, that negative uh, attitude towards government, um, a lot of their ideas sound like central planning. I mean, it, it's not a whole lot different from what the Soviet Union was doing, except, you know, with the help of computers, is basically, basically those differences. And the, and the, the confidence they had that computers could do it is basically uh, based on what I see is an underlying scientism in, in their, uh, in their ideology. Basically they, they, they believe that science is the ultimate authority that we can uh, use hard science in place of all other science uh, of, of all social sciences and all politics and economics and just, just have science run the show. Um, you know, no need for economics or sociology or psychology or philosophy. That's all just for hard sciences to discover. And I think that that's a very dangerous ideology. It neglects the fact that we live not just in a physical universe, but also a social universe. Um, and we need tools for navigating that social universe. And, and, the, and simply using uh, you know, scientific measurements is not, is not going to, um, is not going to accomplish that. So, I mean, you know, and, and, and I think that even if they could get the central planning thing to work in the in a in a way that the the Soviet central planning scheme didn't, namely by um, you know, making sure that there aren't problems of overproduction, underproduction, and you know, um, having people wait in bread lines all the time. Still, I think that having a system like that. Uh, the the problem is it does is it doesn't allow for any kind of novelty. There there's a kind of spontaneous order that the market can can produce, and yeah, that that's why you know, as much as I as many criticisms I ha as I have of capitalism, um, I still value the market. I still believe that a uh, the free market is the best means for is the most efficient means of distribution of resources, even if you know, it it, lack, it lacks by itself mean means for like fairness and things like that. But I think there are adjustments we can make within the market economy that could uh, allow for that and allow for a much more bottom up approach than what these uh, zeitgeist people are, are talking about. Um, because I, because I, I see, I mean, they have all, a lot of the ideas they discuss in zeitgeist are individually interesting, but they're just talking about redesigning society in such a top-down approach where you know they know exactly how um, they're going to replace every part of the society with this and this and this and, and, I, and I think you have to allow for, for more organic change. They have to create the institutions that will allow society to be redirected in, in a more positive direction and then allow for and spontaneity and change in, you know, new, new ideas and uh, new technologies and new, you know, social uh, forms to, to come about in ways that um, you, you can control the parameters, but you, but you allow for that creativity to flourish. So um, I'll leave it there for now. Peace.